all enjoy the delightful music of these children from Nakajeri National School. They're here with their teacher all day today. And four of the children are children of two of our staff here in Italy, which is very nice to have here with us today. We also have some children from Moyder Web National School who are in period dress, you can see them around there. And we're really grateful that they can be allowed to add to our occasion today. The decision to rename stations after Patriots was taken by um, Dr. Todd Andrews, who was appointed chairman of CIE back in 1958. Fifteen of the stations were named after 16 of the executive leaders. Sorry, should have done that first. Um, Pierce Station being named after Patrick and Willie Pierce. Now, Roger Casement trotted out of Trilly on the 22nd of April, um, accompanied under arrest to Dublin and on to imprisonment in the Tower of London. So that's our connection with Roger Gatesford. Uh, we're most privileged to have James Mackey here with us today. I'm delighted James to be here. James Mackey. <laughs> Jim stepped up in 1966 to unveil the plaque here uh, in place of his father, who sadly had passed away some weeks before that. And Dr. Herbert O. Mackey wrote the book, The, Time, the Life and Times of Roger Casement. And it, it's wonderful to see Jim and a few of his colleagues here today, Sean Joseph, and a few others who were here in 1966 and could make it again today. Really great to see you. The portrait, which is here behind me, was done by local artist Michael O'Donnell, quite famous. And he very generously, generously donated the portrait to us here in the station. It normally hangs in our ticket office and it can be seen on a daily basis, but we moved it out here today in honour of the occasion. <coughs> I'd now like to call upon the first speaker, Councillor Tom McAllister, Mayor of Trinity, to address us. Thank you very much. Um, hello, good morning everybody. Um, you're all very welcome here to Caseman Station this morning in Trinity to celebrate the 50th anniversary of its re renaming to honour Roger Casement. Roger Casement was born in Dublin, grew up in Antrim, worked all over the world in places like the Congo and South America. But we here in Kerry, I suppose, have a very special connection to Roger Casement. I suppose that's why we're all here this morning, to celebrate and commemorate that connection. Uh, Roger Casement landed at Dana Strand, as we know, on Holy Thursday morning the 21st of April, Easter 1916. He travelled into the Irish waters in a German U-boat that contained arms for the Irish rebellion. Earlier that day, the odd also carrying a cargo of arms had arrived at Trilly Bay as well. But due to a series of unfortunate events, there was no one there to meet the odd. It was chased by a British patrol to Cork Harbour, where it was scuttled there by its captain to avoid the enemy getting the arms. After landing on Bannistrand, Roger Casement took refuge in the Ring Fort, McKinnis Fort, in a field near Arkford, before being arrested on Good Friday and then taken into Trilly. And he was then transported to London via Dublin the following day. I have, uh, I suppose, a direct connection myself to Casement's landing also here in Kerry, uh, because Captain Monteith and Bailey also came in with Casement on board that day. Monteith, of course, um, uh, came into Trilly. He walked into Trilly. He actually came into the square in Trilly to a uh, Jarl Spicer's shop. And he met a lady there, and uh, she got her father. And he said, well, the person you need to speak to is Tommy Kedestrom. Uh, and that was my grandfather. So he, he sent out word to my grandfather. And then my grandfather came in and got him, and got him to safety. Um, he dressed him up. In old clothes, because obviously, when you come from a different country and it's like if an American comes here and they have brighter clothes or a baseball cap or a, or a green jacket or a red jacket, they stick out a bit more. He dressed him up in old Irish clothes, an old Irish coat and cap, <laughs> and he got a few of the old Irish brigades, which had mentioned the Rink in Trilly and uh, a few of the Valley Mechanicals. In this way, the railways, perhaps more than any other organisation, kept these names in the public consciousness. Thousands of people travel to and from the stations every day. 
and whether we are aware of it or not, we pass under their names as we go about our daily lives. So these stations and the railway lines are a vital part uh, of, of Irish society today. They allow communities to keep connected and they supported, of course, businesses and tourism down through all the years. Many of us will have to have got the train here from time to time, maybe going up to Dublin for the All Ireland, and we've often come back here in high spirits with, with great memories. The railways have made a great contribution to this county here in Kerry, in here in Tralee, and also all around the country in Ireland. So I'm not going to detain you any, any longer, but just to, to conclude by saying, I suppose, I'm delighted to be here today. And, uh, especially as kind of a Republican mayor, a Republican member of Tralee Municipal Authority, and a Republican member of Kerry County Council, to remember Roger Casement and to, you know, and to pay tribute to his life. So, with that, I conclude. And thank you very much, David. Thank you. Thank you. We have with us today Angus Mitchell, who is also a historian, and Angus is going to give us some background to Roger Casement. I think it is deeply um, moving and in some ways both romantic and symbolic to talk in a railway station because of course it's a place of fond farewells and of joyous uh, reunifications and of course of mundane uh, daily weekly travel. Uh, but it was here that I first set foot in Kerry uh, 21 years ago uh, to start tracing Casement's path through this part of the world. And I think it is, um, I don't think there's any figure involved with 1916 who more, is more deserving of a railway station to be named after him. Uh, the reason for that is that Casement, his whole life was really involved with the railway, you could argue. Um, he helped build one of the most important railways in Africa between the Lower Congo and the Upper Congo, uh, a, a journey that he eventually made when it was opened um, in 1898. He, uh, when he was posted to Portuguese East Africa uh, in 1895, he began to wrote to his sister Nina uh, a week before his execution. And it is really one of the most powerful pieces of writing that Casement ever achieved. And it's a well-known passage in this region because it describes his landing uh, in Banner Strand uh, on the 21st of April, 1916. And he wrote to his sister, When I landed in Ireland that morning, about 3 a.m., swamped and swimming ashore on an unknown strand, I was happy for the first time for over a year. Although I knew that this fate waited on me, I was for one brief spell happy and smiling once more. I cannot tell you what I felt. The sand hills were full of skylarks rising in the dawn, the first I had heard for years. The first sound I had heard through the surf was their song as I waded in through the breakers, and they kept rising all the time up to the old raft at Carahane, where I stayed and sent the others on. And all around were primroses and wild violets and the singing of the skylarks in the air. And I was back in Ireland again. As the day grew brighter, I was quite happy, for I felt all the time it was God's will that I was there. The only person alive, if he be alive, who knows the whole story of my coming and why I came with what aim and hope is Monteith. I hope he is alive, you that may, you and that you may see him, and he will tell you everything. And then you will know that the very thing I am blamed for, and I am dying for, was quite what you would have wished me to do. It is a cruel thing to die with all men misunderstanding, misapprehending, and to be silent forever. And I think one of the beauties of that passage is how he manages to transcend his own situation and find that beautiful um, world around him, surrounding him, and, and indeed if those who were present at the magnificent um, state ceremony a few weeks ago would have also seen the primroses and the skylarks and the violets. 
So the second passage is from the open confession that he made to Father McCarroll on the eve of his execution. And I think this is really significant today because it was Father McCarroll who had the conversation with Jim Mackey's father, Herbert Mackey, about 15 or 16 years after Casement's execution, that in the end inspired Herbert Mackey to devote much of his life to trying not only to bring Casement's body back to Ireland, but also to uh, rescue his um, reputation, if you like, from the condescension of um, history. And so this is the passage of his, from his open confession. He wrote, It is a strange, strange fate, and now, as I stand face to face with death, I feel just as if I were going to kill a, if, as if they were going to kill a boy. For I feel like a boy, and my hands so free from blood, and my heart always so compassionate and pitiful that I cannot comprehend how anyone wants to hang me. It is they, not I, who are the traitors, filled with a lust of blood, of hatred of their fellows. These artificial and unnatural wars, prompted by greed of power, are the sources of all misery now destroying mankind. I shall still hope till the sheriff comes, and if he comes, it is to prepare to go to God with calm and hope, and leave all here with an infinite blessing breathed from a very finite heart. No man in the world ever got so much undeserved friendship as I have found these last days. The great outpourings of love and goodness on me is the greatest proof of God's love for sinful men. God gave me into this captivity and death, and I kissed the divine hand that leads me to the grave. Alas, third passage. I, I think it's a miracle that it survived, and there's a typed copy of it in the National Library of Ireland, which has been quite heavily marked by the blue pencil of the censor, and not for publication written over it. And it was really, it's titled, uh, Casement's Last Message to Ireland. And it is an extraordinarily um, prophetic um, vision, if you like, of why we're standing here today. God will surely give freedom to Ireland. Irishmen live unselfishly and die faithfully for Ireland, as the men of 1916 have done. And no pa power of man or empire of gold can withhold freedom from men so vowed. What was attempted so valiantly this year by a handful of men is the only episode of this war that should survive in history. The rest is either mistaken slaughter of brave men or plotting to destroy an enemy by hate for motives of greed and dominion. Ike Horatian delivered a casement's fort, as it became known, on McKenna's fort, Carahan, as most of you I'm sure know, know where I'm talking about, where um, Sean Joseph and, and Dawn erected a monument uh, back in the 1990s in a place very much associated with the great casement trail that stretches throughout the Atlantic world. And Ash had known casement uh, <coughs> briefly, met with him on, on, on a couple of occasions. And he writes this oration which is subsequently published through um, the support of Alistair Green. And it's an incredibly powerful piece of um, sort of folkloric history about 1916. And I'm going to read um, a passage with my slightly strained Irish, and, uh, but I think you should still um, get the gist of what has been said. So Ash wrote, Since my very childhood on the side of the hill or the shores of Dingle Bay, I heard old native speakers of Kirk Aguina tell us of the prophecy of St. Colum Killer. That prophecy stated an O'Donnell would land on a strand of Cork of Kirk Aguina, that he would land on the sands of his native land and that he would bring liberty to the shores of Ireland, which we are sighing after for centuries. 
Old people in Copaguina looked forward to this mystical O'Donnell to land on the strand of Copaguina with a powerful army and powerful. Um, as you all may be aware, the Rolaren partnered with the Royal Irish Academy for the 1916 commemorations. Their book, Portraits and Lives, has 42 chapters about different people who were involved in the rising and 42 portraits by the artist David Rooney. At each of the 15 stations, we have a panel, similar to the one here at the side of the arch. They feature the details about the station's namesake. And the code at the end of the panel can be downloaded, and that will get you into the chapter on Roger Casement, free of charge. So I would encourage you all to do that today before you leave. Um, I would also like to extend our thanks to Ruth Hagerty, who's with us today for only a Royal Academy. Her family came to Kerry for a weekend, and I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, there are some staff who put a lot of work into getting today ready, and Michael here has a lot of member of people have brought in, which I think you'll all find interesting if you take time to look at it. And thanks, Michael, for bringing it in and sharing with us.